Hi everybody, it's Debbie here from Skills Development Scotland. As part of today's Meet the Expert in our Discover Cyber Skills programme, we have Dr Lindsay Shepherd from Aberty University. So Lindsay's going to talk to you about her experience working within cyber. So I'm going to hand you over to Lindsay now and she'll run through the presentation. Over to you, Lindsay. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'm here today to talk to you um, just a bit about my daily life um, working in cyber security. So, as Debbie said, I'm a lecturer in cybersecurity at Aberdeen University. So, I've got a PhD in usable security, um, which basically means that I um, look at the, the human aspects of cybersecurity and how to uh, keep people safe and um, how to make it usable. It's a really difficult task. Um, as well as that, I also do a bit of teaching as well, um, along with my research. So, I teach web development, so, I teach people how to build websites. Um, I also teach a bit of uh, mobile forensics. So if a mobile device is used in a crime, um, the police often investigate these devices to see exactly what happened. Um, so very recently, I've been working with Police Scotland um, on a case. Um, and in addition to that, um, I also teach ethical hacking and computing projects. So I supervise uh, final year students. So if you're not sure where Aberdeen University is, um, so it's in Dundee. Um, home of uh, Dandy, you know, or Willie, um, and I work in the School of Design and Informatics um, in Division of Cyber Security. So yeah, a bit more about my, my teaching and what it involves. Um, so I, I teach um, second year web development, so teaching the, the very basics of how to build a website um, up into more um, complex websites. I also supervise project and group work. Um, so as I'll discuss later, um, when you're working in computing or cyber security, you never usually work alone. You're working in part of a team. Uh, so we do that um, at university. We split the students into teams and get them to work together. Um, again, like I said, um, a bit of mobile forensics as well. So I'm sure most of you have um, a mobile phone on you, have a smartphone, um, and you'll use various, for example, social media apps, um, health applications that's constantly recording data about you. Um, if phones are ever used in a crime, the police can investigate these to, to see what happened. Um, and all of these applications can, can tell a, a picture um, of what might have gone on. Um, and I also teach a bit of ethical hacking as well. So it's the complete opposite of what I do in the web development class. Um, I teach people where there, where there are security flaws um, in web applications. Um, and the potential dangers that these flaws can have. So it's a, it's a whole mix of different subjects that I teach. Um, again, on the research side of things, um, I'm interested in the human side of security and how to keep people safe online. Um, it's a really, really difficult task to make security usable. Um, you'll find this, for example, if you're trying to create a password um, for your email accounts. Um, you can't just have a short, easy to remember password. Uh, that's not very secure. Um, typically, uh, more secure passwords are longer um, and complex. However, that makes them really difficult to remember. Um, so there's a fine balance there between security and making sure it's usable. And of course, the other part of my job, um, when I'm doing research, I've got to write up my work and present at conferences. Um, and the upside of that it means that I get to visit some really cool places. Um, so in the past few years alone, um, instead of just being stuck at my desk, um, I've gotten to Las Vegas, I've gotten to the Grand Canyon, uh, I've gotten to Amsterdam, and of course Canada, I uh, visited Vancouver a couple of years ago. So I thought I would give an introduction as to um, what my job uh, involves in terms of research that I do. Um, and I thought I would go with an example that you could all um, understand. So social media, um, I'm guessing that uh, most of you in this room have a social media account um, and there's lots of issues with these. So one of the biggest concerns is that people reveal too much information um, online. Um, and there's not just a few of these services. There's you know Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I could go on and list them, um, but I'm sure that all of you in the room have at least one of these accounts. Um, and are sharing information. So there's many different things that it can be used for. Um, so there's social engineering. Um, 
you know, and tracking people. So trying to find out what people are interested in um, and then perhaps sending them a message to try and get more information out of them. Uh, this is also known as open source intelligence. So there's various different tools out there that can be used to gather information about a person. Um, for example, um, you know, many people overshare online. Um, and one of the really in interesting bits of information that you can find online uh, quite often is geolocation. So many of these services um, take a note of where you are when you're using them. So Twitter is actually a good example of that. Um, if you have uh, geolocation information shared on, um, it can tell you where you are when you're tweeting. So the information that you can derive from that can actually be pulled onto um, Google Maps. So you can actually plot a line of where someone has been when they're tweeting. So that's just an example from, from my account. You can kind of see that I've been right down the, the east coast of Scotland. Uh, these tweets also have timestamps against them, so you can figure out exactly what time someone was sending a message. So from that, you can look and you can try and establish a pattern of where someone works um, or perhaps where they live. Um, if you notice that there's a series of tweets that follow a, a railway line um, on the map, you can kind of figure out that they're probably sending messages when they're commuting. Um, and you can look at the timestamps and kind of tell what train they're on as well. It's quite scary the, the level of detail that you can get down to. The other thing that people quite often do as well is they um, share when they're out of their house and that they're away um, attending an event. Um, so this has been a problem for many years, um, almost a decade now. So um, one of the early sites that explored this um, was back in 2010. It's called Please Rob Me. And basically, this was a website that looked at Twitter and looked for the keywords that people, where people said that they were out of their house. And from there, it could kind of derive that technically, if you're sharing that you're out of your house, someone could break in. Um, and it was just a way of highlighting um, awareness that, you know, be careful what it is that you share online. You don't want to reveal too much information. And of course, you can have characters like this coming into your house. And this was done um, at Christmas as an example, uh, nicking the presents from under your tree, um, just because you've shared too much information online. Yeah, it's a bit of a, an extreme example, but there's potential there. So how can you... Um, mitigate the risks? Um, how can you keep yourself safe online? Um, I don't want to turn this into an internet safety um, lecture, but just a few hints and tips. Um, I would check the settings on your phone to begin with. Um, so do you have things like geolocation turned on on your device? Um, do you need it turned on? Um, also have a think about where you're using your phone and who can see your information. Um, so if it's things like Facebook, um, you've probably heard this advice again and again, only add people that you actually know. Um, and same goes for other social media platforms like Snapchat as well. It would also be worth having a look at your privacy settings on the likes of Facebook as well. Um, so again, just to see if your posts are public um, or if it's just your friends that can see them. Um, and again, going back to, um, you know, do you accept strangers on, on Facebook? Um, I would advise only accepting people you actually know. So that's just a brief look at um, some of the, the useful security um, work I do. What I thought I would kind of round up with um, is the skills needed to get a computing job. Um, so I will say that I'm a former Merns Academy pupil. So um, that's in Lawrence Kirk, um, again, east of Scotland. And I will say even back then when I was in um, S3, S4, um, back when we did standard grades, um, I studied a whole range of um, subjects. So it wasn't just computing, although I really enjoyed it. Um, I also studied uh, English, maths, French, biology, physics, history, and, and more than that. Um, upon leaving Merns, um, I came to Arbutay in 2005, and that's when I started doing an undergraduate degree in computing. And I really enjoyed that, so I decided that I wanted to continue onwards. Um, so then I went and did my master's in internet computing. Um, so again, that involved more programming um, and more web-based technologies. And then I decided that I wanted to do a PhD um, in usable security. So again, um, that drew on my experience of using web-based technologies. Um, and I developed a little browser add-on to try and keep people safe online. 
So I'd like to hi highlight that it, it's not just all about programming. Um, there's loads of different skills that you will use if you want a career in computing or cybersecurity. Um, so for example, there's loads of problem solving. Um, quite often you'll come across an issue um, that needs to be resolved um, and there's different ways you go about doing it. It is a, a problem solving task. Um, so typically you might use some math skills um, and general reasoning. You also need a bit of creativity as well. Um, so if you're designing something for a user, you have to bear in mind um, you know, how it looks and to ensure that it's usable um, and accessible. Um, so you might need a bit of an art skill, um, design skills as well. Um, I would also argue in that coding is an, is an art as well. Um, and of course, most importantly, uh, working with others. So as I highlighted towards the, the start of the presentation, you very rarely work alone and teamwork is important. Um, I know that's a stereotypical image of you know, a computing person working away in a basement by themselves. Um, that just doesn't happen. Um, everybody tends to work together to resolve a problem. Again, um, you need to have good communication skills as well. Uh, you have to write about your work um, and you have to make your work understood to others, um, no matter what level you're studying at. Um, so English class will help with this. Of course, you might also have to present your work to your class um, or your team um, or when you eventually get out into the workplace and um, your workmates as well. So you do need to um, be able to speak confidently in public. Um, I will admit that um, even at high school, I was absolutely terrified in speaking in front of people. Uh, but basically, practice makes perfect. Um, and now I'm quite happy doing it. Um, but it took many years to get to that stage. So just don't worry if you're not confident with that yet. Um, that just takes practice. And um, there's also many different jobs that you could get as well in, in cybersecurity, many different aspects. Um, not all of them are focused on cybersecurity. Um, if you have a, a degree in computing, you can become a software engineer. Um, you can become an ethical hacker, so protect a system. Um, a web developer or designer. So whether you're designing the, the back end code that drives a website or you're, you're driving uh, and building the, the front end of the website that people generally interact with. Um, there's also the computer game side of things as well. Um, if you can program, um, you can program computer games. Um, there's also more creative roles as well, like computer games artists. Um, and then there's potentially work with the police as well. Um, for example, becoming a forensic analyst. So that's looking at the digital forensic side um, of computing. Um, and you can also be a security researcher as well, which is kind of the, the category that I fall into. Uh, what I'd also like to highlight as well is that computing and cybersecurity isn't just for the boys. Um, I will say when I started at university, I was the only girl in my class um, and that was out of 40 students. Um, I have noticed in the past few years that this is getting better um, and the number of girls in the class um, is getting higher. Um, but in general, the, the numbers themselves are still quite low. Um, and it is something that we're looking to improve. Um, I would say don't let anybody put you off studying the subject. Um, and if it is something you enjoy, um, stick with it um, and you'll do well. So we'll just kind of round up with some of the courses that we have at Aberty University. Okay. So we've got computing, uh, we've got ethical hacking as well. And then there's more creative roles, for example, um, computer arts. Um, computer games applications development and computer games technology. So those are both um, rely heavily on programming as well. Um, so some are more creative, some involve more coding, um, but there's a huge spectrum of courses available if you have an interest in computing. So I'd just like to say thank you for listening. Um, if you do want to know more, um, you're welcome to send me an email um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Hi Debbie, can you hear me? 
Hi, Lindsay. Thanks very much for that. That was great. Thank you. Um, so one of the questions that we were just sort of thinking of there was um, the courses at Aberty are fantastic. Um, if pupils were to get the, the grades that were required to get into these courses, is there any advice that you could give them on potentially other things that they could be doing whilst at school to sort of, you know, make their application more appealing when it comes to applying for any of these courses? Um, I mean, yeah, you could take part in things like um, if there's code clubs or extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. um, that's always good. Um, it kind of shows that you've gone a bit above and beyond. Um, voluntary activities are always good too. Um, you know, and if you can show that you know you've got an interest in other subjects as well, it's not just all about computing. That that's always good. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fantastic. Um, Lindsay, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, really, really interesting, really useful. Um, and thanks again for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.